God, I hate duckweed. It just keeps on coming back. No matter what you do, it just regrows. I literally removed all of this stuff two weeks ago and it's all back. Stop eating it. I can see you. I can see you all there underneath. Wait a minute, that gives me an idea. Why don't we try and harvest this duckweed and try and make a sustainable, sustain my God, I can't say that word, sustainable food source that we can reuse over and over again. Maybe we can learn to love the duckweed. Hmm, let's give it a go and see. Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video, right, we are going to try and see if we can figure out a way to make duckweed a more sustainable food source in our shrimp tanks. And by the way, I am no longer Mark Shrimp Tanks. I am a shrimp. I'm going to identify as a shrimp keeper. Right, they, him, he, her, God, I don't want to get demonetized for talking. <laughs> he, I want to be a fisher them. Right, so, oh, you know what I could identify as bald, blind, beautiful is probably a push, bald, blind, baboon, I don't know, that's probably about the right way to say it. Right, but anyway, guys, let's get on with it, to carry on. Uh, the ideas I had for um, processing this stuff would be to... Uh, take it out, right, so we're going to have to figure out a way how to separate the duckweed from the actual inhabitants of the tank, right, because you've seen my other videos before when we do stuff like this. Look at look how many shrimp and snails are in here. There's effing bazillions of them, right, so I don't want to, like, I don't want to go through and, like, cook my shrimp and snails and whatever else. I know a lot of you guys will say, oh, but the snails are good protein, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that way. Thank you very much. I, I identify as a not as a vegan, but not as a vegetarian either. I don't know what I am yet, but uh, you get the gist. I'm not going to kill little animals. So I was thinking the ideas that we could do would be possibly the good old faithful way that we used to do with the, with the nettles is maybe try and blanch duckweed. It's not something I've never tried to do before, um, which would probably make it more palatable. I was thinking about doing the usual, uh, using a kettle, boil the water, put it in, in with the duckweed and then microwave the whole lot for maybe a minute or something that's probably more than enough to cook it through and then dry it off, drain it, dry it off and then see how it goes into the tank. We could, pro we could probably actually do it that way. That's what we'll do guys, right? we'll do it that way but we'll keep some, we'll split it, split it in half so it's 50-50. We'll try some fresh to see how the shrimp and other inhabitants like the fish like it and I think we'll set something aside to dry, right, and uh, speaking of drying, we're going to do another method as well. I wanted to try my air fryer. Air fryers are awesome. If you don't have one, you should get one. I, I prefer my air fryer now over my uh, oven. God, I sound like I'm a... I don't do any cooking, by the way. Just my wife <laughs> does it all. Uh, but I prefer the air fried food, probably because it's just faster as well. Uh, so the idea again was to separate the inhabitants of the tank from the duckweed, uh, drain all off, put it in some kind of tray, maybe with some like uh, pizza, uh, pizza bacon um, paper, you know that stuff that you get you can put on the bottom of a dish. But we have these little dishes in the air fryers as well, maybe I put a little layer of that paper, uh, get as much of the water out of the duckweed as possible. And put it on, see, I'll see if I go through, I'm going to put it on as low a temperature as possible and uh, just gently air fry it and we'll see how it goes, right? Because what I would like to happen is, is it becomes so dry. Air fryers work really fast and great for food normally, so I'd imagine this would work. Um, we want it so dry that if we wanted to, we could powder it, right? Because I think that would be another good solution to the... The issue of having bazillions of uh, duckweed in our tanks. Because, guys, wouldn't it be awesome if we could do this and then that's another, like, a uh, couple of dollars saved on shrimp food. Make the tank self-sustainable. Actually use duckweed for something. I mean, I've actually seen it in, uh, like, other videos on YouTube where people have self-sustaining, self God, I can't say that word, uh, setups where they have uh, swimming pools, for example, and then they have, like, a chicken coop over the top and all the chicken poop goes into the water of the swimming pool, right, and it's not used by humans, obviously, but they have to tapa, tap, oh my god, what's it called? Tapia, tapalia, tilapia, tilapia, that is it, oh my god. Tilapia, they have tilapia in the water, there's no chlorine or nothing in this pool, it's set up purely for fish, right? and across the surface of the water is duckweed, 
Right, so the theory behind it is the chicken coop poop comes down into the water, it's the fertiliser, duckweed grows, the fish eat the duckweed, and then the person that was doing the, the video, they were actually knitting out lots and lots of the duckweed, and they were giving it back to the chickens as food, so it was like just a, a never-ending process, and they had eggs, chickens to eat, and they had fish. So wouldn't it be awesome if we could do something like that as well with this? Let's stop blurring and get on with the project. Alright guys, let me show you in a little bit more detail the actual issue I'm facing here and that is just the duckweed, it just it never stops growing, you can see here. Right on, it's just building up and building up and building up, you see it? So I need to come up with a solution for this because yeah, look, at, look how dull this tank is here. And I regularly take a duckweed out of this tank and I put it in with my daughter's goldfish upstairs and it munches on all the goldfish here. But we need to come up with a better solution than this, right? So. Let's get over here, we've got two buckets, we're going to separate some of the duckweed into the buckets, we're going to use a net because I need to uh, add water to the tanks and then uh, we're going to use a comb first and we're going to see how we're going to separate Bold and beautiful, no matter what they say. Where is my comb? You know, I think someone stole my comb. Oh wait, there it is, there it is. Bold and beautiful, no matter what they say. Yes, I'm going to just pull all this to one side like so because we're going to need to get some water out of here. It is so built up and thick. Yeah, I, th I think what I'll also do, guys, is I'm, I'm going to get rid of this plastic crap here with the plants in it because the roots go into the water and they used to get tangled up and everything, right? So we are going to try and get this mass here out of the tank without catching too many shrimp and too many endler fry, right? So we're going to get... Oh my God, this bit's so annoying. We're going to put some of the water from the tank from that bit there into this container and then we're going to start to transition some of this stuff into the bucket. Alright, so you can just see the, the bucket off camera there a little bit. I'm going to put my net there and then I'm going to try and get some water and this is just the water that we're going to use to separate the duckweed from the actual water that's going into the container right? because we want to keep this water separate. Right, So in the beginning I'm just going to fill it up enough that we can start to do our separation process. It's probably a very good time for me to do a water change in this tank as well. I'm trying to keep an eye on this to make sure I don't grab any fish, which is probably going to be impossible because there's so many of them in this tank. But yeah, let's do this. I need enough so we can have our separation. I can see a couple of endlers in there already. Let's be a little bit gentler with pouring the water in. Another endler. So many endlers. Let's see. Another couple. And this is what I was talking about there, right? So you check this, make sure there's nothing in it. And in our net here, guys, you can see. You can clearly see there's a few fish and uh, there's a one shrimp. So this is why you, you use the net first, right? And I'm just going to loosely grab the net like this, turn it upside down, and put them back in the tank. Give it a little shiggle. Hey presto, we now have we now have separated our water from our duckweed, and this part's important because we need to be able to keep this duckweed free for a minute. All right, next guys, I'm going to use half this water in the container next to it because the, the one on the left is going to be our final container that we're going to put our duckweed in for our final inspection, and this one is where we're going to actually use that comb again, and we're actually going to use it to scrape the duckweed off the tank, put it in here, we're going to try and separate the fish from the duckweed and then we're going to put them over, all the duckweed over into this one. God, it's I make this so complicated, don't I? Alright, let's do this a few times just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to try and get as much of this duckweed out of here as we can so we can actually see the fish and whatever else in the tank. Because I have a lot of plants in here. Alright, so the, the way you do this guys, you can just see off camera a wee bit there, is you go, get all the roots, all the big stuff out the way. And you're going to just go under it a little bit and try and pick it up like this, you see? There's a big hefty amount of duckweed into this water here. Try to do it again. You basically do this as many times as you want to try and get as much of the duckweed out of the tank. Now I have a uh, val in here as well, so... I'm going to get the odd bit of vowel leaf. But I would like to try and get as much of this out as possible 
this go and then uh, we'll try and do our separation thing right so I'll be back in one second all right shrimp farm uh, next I'm going to remove the duckweed from this container and I'm going to put it in here and the reason I do this guys I like to do it over and over is because it gives a chance for you to get all the snails and shrimp off the actual duckweed then in an ideal world I probably should have more water in this but I don't have enough to do a water change today so yeah this is why we do it right so here's a good example look nice little ram's horn snail can go back in the tank so this is your chance to go through it and check stuff I in good conscience can't put all this into a blender or air fry or whatever else knowing that there might be snails and shrimp in it so that is why we do these things right and when we're putting it across you just have to look across the surface like for little snails and stuff and whatever else and it's your choice if you can live with killing little animals and whatever and that is up to you I think I just saw a fish in there as well so in this tub here I think I saw an endler an endler somewhere and when it gets really low to the point where you can't take stuff out then you can use a shrimp net instead now I could have sworn I saw an endler there you know what just happened to me there guys randomly at the back of my back right there's a hose that just came off the wall and smacked me in the back like this thing what does that mean? what does that mean? yeah I was sure again I was pretty positive there was an endler in here I think I saw it so maybe we scooped it up again that'd be kind of odd or maybe I imagined seeing it maybe but you can see here there's probably about three or four snails in there not too many actually not as many as we thought there was going to be right so just get in there remove the snails do your best I like to try and save as many lives as possible right and I'm pretty happy that there's no endlers in here right so we just got to do the process again right and, and I think uh, we could probably get away with using our shrimp net for this next one but I'm going to try and take it the majority of this like this and I'm going to keep out an eye out for any endlers how could I imagine an endler? maybe it's because the endler tub is right there and I'm looking at the babies at the same time so I'll probably do this maybe about three times guys until I'm happy that there's no shrimp or fish in here oh, there's an awful lot of snails on this side so some of the snails like this, like a little bladder snail, they like to float on the top and yeah you're, you're gonna actually kill snails no matter what you do but yeah, let's try and save as many as we can and it also gives you another chance to look at the bottom of the bucket here because quite often the snails will stick to the bucket I can't see anything at all so here is our first batch of duckweed and they're lovely so let's get over to the desk over there and we'll start to process some of this lovely jubbly stuff and we'll see if we can actually make something from it all right shrimp lovers we have our duckweed ready here I'm actually just going to squeeze some of the water out because we're actually going to uh, air dry, air fry or air dry here. I'm going to squeeze it over this little thing here because yeah, we're actually going to blanch it in there. So I'm going to squeeze as much of the water out as I can until the water stops dripping underneath. And I was trying to think of a way how to do this with the air fryer. Uh, so it will dry the best and, and I thought yeah why don't we just put it straight on the actual tray itself I can wash this later my wife will never know uh, so let's uh, grab some of this stuff now the, the th one of the other things I hate about duckweed is it's just a mess when you touch it <laughs> you'll all agree right so let's grab I don't know let's grab about half of the ball half of the bollocks We'll put it on there and then the other half can go in here and this is the stuff that we will blanch it's going to be our blanched batch now one of the other things I did 
kind of um, not think about is I don't actually have a dehydrator anymore. So what we probably could do is we'll blanch this. Um, half of it we'll try in the tank just as it is because we're producing a ton of duckweed. If this way works then that's all good. Um, if we want to store it maybe we can freeze it possibly and use it uh, uh, another time but because we're already producing so much duckweed we could probably just use it fresh all the time. Yeah I think that's probably a better way to do it. Guys let me know what you think in the comment section about that. Would you use this fresh or would you freeze it because we're going to have tons of it. So this one here, we kind of need to just spread it out a little bit, a little bit more than it is. I don't know what it is about duckweed, it kind of reminds me of uh, dog's hair <laughs> when you touch it. <laughs> oh, you know, because it's so sticky to your hands. I was thinking what way could I possibly air fry this and I thought, well, how about as a vegetable, like really fast, probably I don't know, not even four or five minutes. See, there's a wee snail there, you see that? Saved your life, wee snail. You can go in that tank. And, yeah, th that looks lovely, doesn't it? Four or five minutes and this will be done. Right, let's do it. Stop talking, let's go. Okay, this is the air fryer. Let's see how this goes. Put it on vegetables, it'll only be on for a couple of minutes though. And into the microwave we go. This is 30 seconds to a minute. Let me see. You got to keep an eye on it so it doesn't overboil. Okay guys, so here are the results. This is what we have managed to make. And let me give you my first impressions of each one so you can make your own mind up, right? And I've got to say, off the bat, I think this one is probably the one that's going to work. And I'll give you my reasons why. This is the dried air fried stuff. And can you imagine um, how you make candy floss guys at the fair, when you go to the fair and you make candy floss? Well, that is what this eventually does in your air fryer. I didn't think at the time that this was going to get so light, it would just spin around the air fryer nonstop like this. And because it is so light as well, I can see uh, the issue is with adding it to the tank. Let's actually try a little bit in one of the tanks just to show you, right? If you can see over here, let me put it under the light so you can see. Now I'm going to squeeze it a little bit because yeah, it really is so dry and light that it will take a good time to actually sink. It's not to say that you couldn't do it this way what I'm going to say is, I can see how this way would be a thousand times better than this because uh, when I was preparing this guys, I noticed that uh, while I was letting it cool down, because I decided to let this cool down because the duckweed was kind of a little bit floaty, right, and when you have any kind of vegetables, green vegetables anyway, leafy green vegetables, if you have them and you put them in the tank and they float a little bit, it means you haven't uh, blanched them long enough and it means that there's still air inside the actual plant right so what I did was I just left it in the hot water longer and eventually most of the duckweed sank and that is what we're after with this we need it to sink so that we can feed our shrimp now I can already tell you with the texture and stuff of this that this is is way 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 better than the light stuff you see it I'm going to squeeze it with my fingers and yeah, let's see if we can actually add this to a tank and because the form is fantastic, look at it. Let's see if we can actually add this to the tank and let's see if the shrimp will actually eat it. Into the duckweed tank we go. And I'm going to put it right there, you know, you, one of the things you'll see is it kind of wants to float a little bit. Not too bad actually, not too bad. Now, Remember, duckweed naturally floats, so the fact that it's staying down like this is fantastic. I think it's actually going to come forward and expand and fall off this cliff here. But because it's being cooked, everything in this tank will now eventually eat it. It's going to fall off in it. So that is how you get your duckweed to sink. You just blanch it that little bit extra longer. Now I can see the shrimp starting to go on it. See them? Starting to go a bit berserk. 
Duckweed itself is actually quite high in protein, nutrients, 20, I think, it's, I believe it's between 20 and 30% protein. So it's one of those underrated foods that's never used just because it is so hard to manage. I mean, look at the stuff that you have to deal with. Every time you put your hand in your tank, you get this all up your arms. But we possibly have a solution here which I think I probably will do. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you think. I'm going to come back in five minutes and we'll look at the same spot again. And we'll look down here because you can see it's all falling. And we'll see how many shrimp are here. I actually had to add more to the tank, guys, because <laughs> the shrimp and the fish had eaten it so fast. And I wanted to make sure that you actually got a view of it. So I added more again. And especially the little ancestress, they are absolutely destroying it. You see them all over it. The little tiny cute little ancestress there. Yeah, so I would say this was a winner. Can it ever convert me to being a duckweed lover? Probably not. Probably not. But um, it has found another use, at least in a way. So... The best way to do it is 100% to blanch it. This is more like uh, bird nest soup, if you want to call it that. It's really light and not worth keeping. Um, you can probably freeze this as well and break off little bits. But again, guys, I, I want to make this clear. When you're doing this, you can actually add a decent amount of the stuff back into the tank because they go through it like crazy. Look, I've actually added two bits in there, two whole, maybe a whole teaspoon's worth. And yeah, they're just going berserk eating it. Anywho, thank you for watching. Big, bald and beautiful. Out. Oh.